Welcome to the channel that makes you hate humans more than ever. If this is your second or beyond video watching, I recommend you subscribe. Most of you watching aren't subscribed, and if this is the kind of content you want to keep up to date with, make sure you do it and hit the notifications. Also, if you want to help support what I do and get yourself some cool perks, make sure you check out my Patreon page. A link can be found in the description. And as always, this video may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. After high school, Christopher Neal went into the Navy where he met a young Haley who was another Navy recruit. The very day they met, he told her he was falling for her. After dating, they eloped and moved to Whidbey Island in Washington. They were also expecting their first child together. In 2019, they moved into Haley's grandmother's old home in Comstack Township after having been granted terminal leave from the Navy. Christopher got a new job and they moved into their new home on November 17th. On December 1st, a mere two weeks after they restarted their life in Comstock Township, William Paul Jones entered Christopher's home armed with two guns by breaking through a window in the back of the house. He had been in and out of prison three times and had just recently been released for his last stint. Christopher immediately picked up the phone and dialed 911. 911, what is the location of your emergency? Yes, there's a, there's a man in my house right now. What is, hold on, stop for a second. Whoa, there's a man in my house. I need you to give me your address first. 6300 Proctor Avenue. Comstock is that a house Town. or an apartment? House of the end of the street. Why are you in my house, bro? Tell me to talk to him. You don't get a speakerphone. Why are you in my house, though? There are how many other people are in your house? It's me, my wife, and our daughter. How old is your daughter? She's two. Two? Okay. Yeah. Show up, no, do you have any idea who he is? We do don't know. Here, go that way. Okay. Go that way. No, he is. Just stay right there. Let him push me. No, look. Let my wife come I, 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 okay. you know. I'm, not, I'm not gonna harm you guys. All right? I promise. Take my hand. I'm in Korean Jones. You can go. I'm not gonna harm you. Okay. Where is William at right now? He's standing next to me in my hallway. Okay, are we still on speakerphone? We still are. He's right here. Okay. William. Yes, ma'am. William. Okay. Can Christopher, can Christopher and his wife and daughter step outside? No. Yeah. What? I'm not. Ma'am. What? They're safe. They're safe. They're safe. They're not okay. right here with you. What are you doing in their house? I told you they're shots fired. Where were shots fired at? We're going on uh a uh, old 37 or uh, old Kentucky. Uh, I'm Annabelle. What's that? Is it coming into Bellevue? Stop right here with me, man. No, I ain't going anywhere. You're going man. there with me, man. Bro, turn the light on, please. William. Turn the light on. William. Yes, man. What do you know? What are you trying to have them do? He's coming in the room with me. That's it. Why is he coming in the room with you? Why are you locking that door? Don't lock that door, bro. You are right, man. I just gave you my word, man. You're straight. I get, I get what you're saying, but you got two guns, bro. You say you got two guns? How oh, time is crazy, man? I'm not doing anything. William. I'm in my house, man. I'm sorry, man. William, listen to me. Why are you sitting here in the first place? William, can you listen to me? Yes, ma'am. I need you to put those guns down because I've got, I've got officers that want to help you. I, want, I have officers that want to help you and keep you safe, so I need you to put those guns down. Who are you, man? I'm 911. I've got help for you. I need you to put those guns down so that they can get you the help that you need. I want, I want, I'll be here. So I can leave. The police are there, William. The police are there. No, they're not. They are there. I, they're there. I've got a lot of deputies there. Listen, I'm not harming you. I promise. My word. So My wife just got threatened, bro. I can hear you, bro. You understand? I hear you. They got threatened last night. Okay, I get you, bro. I'm not harming you. Or your children. Or your wife. I'm going to transfer this line, so do not hang up on me, okay? I'm not. I'm not going to. All right. Just a minute for me. Hey, William. William. Yes. Hey, this is Joe from the Sheriff's Department. How are you, man? Glad you back, bro. You need the door. Don't come through that door. Okay. 
We're not going to come through the door, man. We just want to talk to you and find out what's going on. Don't come through that door. Slide your back underneath that door, man. Well, I'm not even up by the door, man. I'm outside the house. Where else? I'm in the house. Stop playing games with me, man. What, what's, what's got you all worked up today, man? Okay, and what do you, what's going on right now? I don't know, I'm upstairs, all I can hear is them, like, slightly talking. Do you still have him on the phone? Yep, so we have, um, so I'm talking to you, and then my other call taker is talking to someone else as well. Do you know who is in the home? No, we have no idea. You have no idea who it is? Yeah, he's barging our back door with two guns. He just barged in? Yeah, and he has my husband locked in a room with him. He don't let my husband or me outside, we ask. We have... Everyone on the phone right now, we have your husband, you, and um, the male that's in your home as well. I just heard a really loud noise. I think it was gunfire. You heard a loud noise? Yeah. The police officers are making entry right now, so stay calm for me, okay? Ten minutes after this call, 911 received another call from a woman. Someone had called her and said he needed help. When the dispatcher asked why they needed help or if they said anything else, the unidentified woman responded. No, I don't know why. He said, before I die. I'm like, what are you talking about? Then I called back and he was just like, help. Then hung up the phone. He was like, call the police. This call indicated to deputies that Neil was alive even though Jones had said Christopher is dead. So the deputies resolved to enter the house at which point William shot Neil in the back of the head. He then opened fire on the police as they entered the house injuring three of them. Thankfully Neil's wife and daughter were not harmed. Jones was charged with 19 charges including open murder. When asked if he understood the charges, Jones said no. When asked if he wanted an attorney present, Jones said, If I plead guilty to all these charges right now, can I get sentenced today so I can hurry up and go to prison for life like everyone wants? In Neil's obituary, it was revealed that Neil and his wife were expecting a second child together. Noah Harpham once described himself as a big friendly giant on eHarmony, a dating website. His mother gave birth to him when she was just 17, and she has said that his upbringing involved dealing with drug addiction and depression in the family. His father committed suicide at the age of 47. His mother later wrote Sober Mercies, How Love Caught Up with a Christian Drunk. It is a book about being a Christian and an alcoholic, and it is about Noah in particular, who turned to alcohol and drugs later in life and dropped out of college and struggled to keep a job. She also wrote other books addressing Noah's experience with drugs, alcohol, and depression. There were small signs that Noah was deteriorating when he once uploaded a blog post and went on his YouTube to vent about God, his family, and the government. People begged for the implied responsibility to be obliterated. He wrote, Welcome to Mind Control. On October 31st at 8.45 a.m., Noah was seen walking around a building with a broken window across the street. He was carrying a rifle and gasoline cans. One of the witnesses quickly picked up the phone and dialed 911. Colorado Springs 911, what's the exact location of your emergency? Um, it's your... Can you repeat that one more time for me and make sure I to correct? Well, it's across the street from me. I'm calling from my address. Tell me exactly what happened. Well, there's a guy walk. There was a guy walking around with like two cans of gasoline or something, two small cans, and a big like a rifle, it was black, and it had a strap around it. He's, he's walking up to doors and stuff. And then I seen that he walked into the building, and the glass window at that business is broke. So he's still in there. I'm kind of keeping an eye on him. But it's kind of scary. I went out there to get in my Jeep to, to get in there to go somewhere, and I'm scared to death. Okay. 
And that's a business? What's the name of the business? I have no idea, but I, I just know it's – there's uh, – an apartment above that, about that, at that place. It's kind of a scrap store, you know, they keep paints or something, I don't know. Okay, and there's no name on that business outside? No. Okay. I can't see that far, but it has something written on the, the door. And then when did this happen? Just probably 10 minutes ago. And he's still there now? Yes. Okay. I don't know if it's a fake gun, a BB gun, but it looks pretty scary. Okay. And you said it looks like a long gun, correct? Like a rifle? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. And then where is he now? Is he still inside? He's still inside that building on the bo uh, on the lower level. And then I need to get that person's description. Do you know his name? Uh, no, I don't. He had a black cap on, and I think I don't remember the clothes, but he had uh, long hair coming up out of the cap. And it was the male white okay, black he's coming out now? Is he's he got a green, green jacket? I don't know. He's going upstairs. Maybe he lives there, but he shouldn't be holding that gun around to anybody. Okay. Or around anybody. And do we know how old he looks? He looks like about 35 or 30. How tall is he? Probably six foot. Thin, medium, or heavy build? Thin. And what color was that long hair? Um, black, brown. It's not real long. It just curls out from underneath his hat. And maybe for that, the, it may be the guy that lives upstairs because he ran right up there, but he still shouldn't be holding that gun. Well, it is an open carry state, so he can have a weapon with him or walking around with it. But of course, having those gas cans, it does seem pretty suspicious. So we're going to keep the call going for that. Okay, and the window's broken to that business downstairs. So right, and you said he's now upstairs, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then, did he arrive in a vehicle? No. Uh. Uh. Okay. And are you or anyone else in immediate danger? No. Okay. And from what you can see, does anyone need medical attention? No, uh-uh. And then how did he enter the building? He just opened the door and walked in. And then he came out and then went upstairs and walked right in. I can see the doors open now upstairs. He could live up there, but... It was scary because he was going across the street to the ladies next door, and then they, he'd come back out like he was looking for something or somebody. Okay. I just hope this, is, you know, it's not as bad as it is. No, I understand. And, again, we'd rather be proactive and make sure everything's okay than to just, you know, assume everything is all right and have something go wrong. So you definitely did the right thing by calling. Okay. And then what are the possible exits from the building? Like, which side are the doors on? Um, the side, uh, both doors are facing east, and it's on the west side of the street. Okay. And then are there any windows in that unit as well? Yes. Okay. All the way around. On both levels, correct? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, he's got another, he's got a handgun now he brought down from upstairs. Now he's going back into the building. He's got a backpack on his back. Blue. He went back into the bottom building. Okay. And then is there anyone else in that building who belongs there? Um, <laughs> there might be a young gal. Um, she's got blonde hair. That's all I know. Would she be upstairs or downstairs? Upstairs. And I won't be around because I've had a lot of losses this week, and I have to go meet with all the families. Okay. And you're not required to stay there. We just, of course, advise not to get involved or disturb anything at the scene. Sure. We'll have officers dispatched out as soon as possible. And, of course, if you see anything else suspicious, any other vehicles that he might leave in or anything like that, I want you to call us back immediately so you can get that description as well. Yeah, but there, there is two cars in there in the driveway that they do drive, but I, I can't tell what they are. Can you see the colors of them? Uh, one's a dark blue and one's a, almost a black. And they're both cars, correct? Yes. Okay, and are they two doors, four doors? One's a four door, and I think they're both four doors. Okay. Okay, and then again, we do have that call started for you. I want you to call us immediately if anything changes, you have any further information, or if you see him, leave. 
Is there anything else I could do for you at all? No, thank you very much. All right, thank you so much for giving us a call. We have this started for you, and have a safe day, ma'am, and I'm sorry for your losses this week. Thank you very much. I hope you feel better, and have a good day. Thanks, bye. Bye-bye. According to the Colorado Springs PD, this call was not considered the highest priority call for service. On top of this, all the officers in the area went on other calls. Ten minutes after the first call, Naomi called 911 again. Colorado Springs 911, what's the exact location of the emergency? Uh, I just called a few minutes ago and the guy came back out and he, he fired a gun at somebody and he's laying on the street dead. Oh my God. You sent an ambulance too. And the guy's got a green army jacket and he walked up towards, um, oh, Platt, north on Platt Avenue. Oh my God. Okay, calm down, okay? Stay with me. I'm just putting that into the call. Oh my God. I've never seen that. got a handgun and a big rifle gun, and like a machine gun in it. And he, some guy was just riding his bike through the alley, out the alley, and the guy started shooting him. And he's laying dead. You need to have somebody come over okay. here right away. Okay. Poor Naomi, guy. I need you to calm down, okay? Are you with the patient now? No, I'm, I'm across the street in my house. The guy might be shooting me, too. How old is the patient? I can't tell. He looks like he's young, maybe 30, 30? 20. I don't know. I can't see him. He's laying in the driveway. Uh, he was riding his bike, and he's awful. Please, somebody. Okay. Are you at this location now? I'm already across the street from it. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, I think he's still shooting. Okay. I heard some more shots fired from that gun that he's got. Oh, my God. He's got a crazed look on his face, too. When did this happen, Naomi? Just two minutes ago, three okay. minutes ago, maybe four minutes ago. And I still hear the gun being shot off. Okay. Oh, my God. How many people are involved? Just the one that's laying on the ground and just that one man by himself. He's got a, a green army jacket on. It's a solid green. And he's got a blue cap on. Okay. I think he's got jeans. Where's Where's the suspect now? He's going north on Prospect and Platt Avenue. You said he's he left? Yeah, he left. He started walking up towards Platt, and then I just now heard the gun go off again. So he's around up there, off Platt and Prospect. So he's on foot. Yes. Oh, that poor guy. I think he, he got shot three times, and it was a big caliber, it sounded like. Oh, my God. Okay. I, I'm too afraid to go out there with that poor guy laying there. Oh, my God. Stay with me, okay? You're doing great. <laughs> Is anyone in immediate danger? No, that, that, that I can see or think. Uh, no. Maybe on Platt Avenue there might be people in danger. Naomi, I need the suspect's description. Do you know his name? No, I don't. Okay, is he white, black, Hispanic, he's Asian? He's white, and he's got long curly hair coming out how, of his cap. How old is he? I think he's probably 35, 30. How no tall? Face, no, no facial hair, and he's how about tall? Like six foot. Six foot? Yeah. Skinny. And you said blonde curly hair? No, brown. Brown curly hair. Uh-huh. Dark brown. What color clothing does he have on? Oh, he's got the the green army coat and he had a he might have a backpack on underneath that coat. Blue jeans. I think yeah, there's people outside that might be in danger up on Platt. Okay. Oh, I just heard another gun fight fire. Oh my god. I think the police probably found him. I see the police lights going west on Platt. Yeah, they need to call an ambulance or something right away. Okay. Is anyone in immediate danger? Only people up, up on Platt, maybe. Okay. Oh, that's my phone. Oh, shit. Uh, Teresa, I'm talking to the police right now. 
I know. I know. Naomi, what's the victim's description? Is he white, black, Hispanic, Asian? Uh, he's white. I got a goat tree, so. White male. How old is he? Um, probably, which one? The suspect? Naomi, yeah. No, the victim. How old is the victim? Oh, yeah. I can't tell his face. <laughs> Give me an approximate. Like 20, probably 30, 30s? Yeah. Is he awake? No. Is he breathing? No. No. I can't. I mean, it doesn't look like he's breathing. He's pretty bad. Okay. How tall is the victim? Probably five foot seven, five foot eight. Is he thin, medium, heavy built? He seems to be medium built. What color hair does he have? I can't tell. He's got a backpack on his back. What color description are his clothing? Uh, blue jeans, um, back, blue backpack, and a grayish blue sweater. And he's got tennis shoes on. I can't tell. The bottoms are red. And he's on a white bike. Oh, my God. Bless his heart. Oh, shoes. <laughs> You're doing good, Naomi, okay? Where exactly is this patient, this victim? He's at a uh, driveway where, those two, where there's two cars. I hope there isn't any more people dead. They might be upstairs or downstairs because the window's broken to the Give me the color, make, and model of those two vehicles in the driveway. Yeah, that's what I gave the lady already. I took the report. I just want to make sure. What, okay, what are the color one's a dark up? blue and one's a, a black, and they're both four doors. Oh, my God. And I went out there twice, and he had the guns, and I was like, Okay, I'm coming back in. And then before you had known it, he's, oh, my God, shooting it. Probably some innocent soul. Has anyone involved in using alcohol or drugs? I don't know. Okay. Not okay. me. It looks like he's been up for a few days. That's Naomi, how like many people need medical? One. One. That I can see, yes. Okay. Is the assailant still by? Still nearby? I don't know. The cops are coming down here now, but I don't know. All right, Naomi, I'm sending have... medical too, okay? i got to ask you some questions for my medical. Okay. Okay, is there any serious bleeding? I can't tell. Okay, okay, you're doing good. All right, I am sending the paramedics to help you now. Stay on the line, and I'll tell you exactly what to do next, okay? Okay. The police officer's there with you now. <laughs> you see the police officer yeah. there? Yeah. All right, Naomi, I'll go ahead and let you go. You did great today, okay? <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. The shooting left three dead. Two women and a bicyclist who begged for his life before he was mercilessly shot. He shot at the window of a squad car as the police closed in. Officers fired back and killed him. The sheriff's office later revealed that Noah purchased the gun in 2009. The motives behind the attack, however, remain unclear. His landlord said that the news was a shock to him. He said that Noah was just a nice guy. I couldn't imagine for a second that he would even have a weapon. The shooting created a lot of controversies, partly due to the first 911 call. It was felt that more could have been done to prevent the shooting after the first call. Other activist groups called for the city to ban open carry laws, I appreciate you taking the time to check out this video, and as I said, if this is your second video, or even your first and you watched it all the way through, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And hit a dislike or a like, I don't really care which one. It does just help out the YouTube algorithm, so yeah. Some things I slack on promoting, and I probably should get on it. Especially with the changes that are coming to YouTube. I guess a lot of videos are going to get age restricted, so I don't know if mine will be on that. But it wouldn't be surprising. Regardless, I hope you are all staying safe out there, and I will catch you in the next video. And just remember, it's always scarier if it's true.